Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it the space shuttle? No, it's Earth Radio Central, and this is Looperman, bringing you the YouTube video classic known as Got Whistlers. This is the Earth Radio VLF Whistler Band Receiver. This is a VLF receiver that I built myself, and this is where the other end of the signal cable from the loop garden ends up right here in the equipment rack at Earth Radio Central. Starting at the top we have a Memorex DVD player. It has the DVD that's an edit of the whistlers that I received on uh, on April the 26th. Below it is the DirecTV satellite receiver, Panasonic Hi-Fi Stereo VCR, a Memorex I mean, excuse me, a Magnavox DVD recorder, Earth Radio, 1980s vintage JVC stereo receiver, 80s vintage Onkyo cassette deck, and I believe this is an early 70s vintage Sony MX12 six channel microphone mixer. And uh, as you can tell, it's engaged and it is what is recording as I speak. If you watch the meter on the Earth radio, it has nothing to do with, with the programming, and it is idle, simply receiving signals from the loop garden via the miniature coax. And because I'm electrical kind of a guy, and since all electrical geeks have line voltage meters in their equipment rack, here we go. There we go. We have 120 volts AC to feed our production center as I speak. Now while I'm introducing equipment so we don't forget, uh, on the Loop Garden video you saw the Thunder Mic that hangs down from the eave of the house. This is the Thunder Mic mixer on the bottom and a generic three input video switch box on top. That was strapped together with heavy cable ties and they tend to stay together. And that's where, uh, that's where the whistlers are logged. I use this to feed the DVD recorder and then mix the weather channel and thunder mic audio along with the VLF and that's how we log the VLF signals on, on DVD through this unit. Okay what we're looking at right now is a video display from Wolfgang Birch's Spectrum Lab program. Uh, I've had it in the computer for a good many months maybe even over a year and what I didn't realize all these years, I've been trying to receive whistlers for four years in an urban environment and the hum and harmonics from the AC and also the noise and, and uh, intermodulation products from uh, out, of, out of band signals were making it impossible for me to, to hear the whistlers in this environment. So uh, I, I never knew until I started working with the program that the program includes some very intense audio processing and it's actually capable of allowing the computer to process whistlers out of the whole cacophony of electrical noise. Uh, I did some observations with, with the audio generator and, and watching the display and uh, determined that what happens in the program is it more or less uses a digital equivalent of a tracking filter. It tends to ignore steady state signals. Now while we're looking at the video display of spectrum analyzer output, a uh, person should note that w what we're looking at, and uh, the vertical lines we're looking at is a broadband spectrum from Spherix. Each lightning strike has a broadband of energy. We'll show the frequency scale in a moment. It's over there to the right and it's out of focus and can't be read. Character characteristic of a whistler is that the frequency slides down and so what happens is you see a line in the middle that's curving away from the vertical lines and that's the whistler. The whistler as time, the x-axis, goes on, goes lower in frequency so the y-axis gets lower and the time gets higher so it, it has a curving slope going down. I have my top frequency set to display at 12,500 Hertz so this is the top end and uh, you see the little band of white, that's the extra half a kilohertz that I allowed the filtering to go above the display range. 
Did I get that backwards? I may have got it backwards. Anyway, we have one wider than the other. We have the display range wider than the filter range or the other way around. Top end is, is around 12 kilohertz. It's in nice graduated scale, 10 kilohertz, 8 kilohertz, 6, 4, on down to go. Uh, let's see if this thing is staying focused. It doesn't look like it's going to stay in focus. I'm going to zoom back out and we'll see uh, the top part of that whistler actually becomes straight. So it kind of appears that I did get the originating sphere. Oh well, not important. We'll go ahead and zoom in on it, see if we can get a frequency reading. This is about the vertical level where the whistler starts. So we're probably starting maybe about 7 kilohertz, maybe 7.5 kilohertz. And uh, zoom back out. Start about 7.5 kilohertz and typically they go down oh, to about 2 kilohertz or maybe a little low. The ionosphere's cutoff frequency is usually around 1500, 1700 hertz or so. So that's the, that's the Whistler. Not too proud of the way this can't read any of the writing the spectrum. There we go. Okay, you see many. Here we have the display frequency range. I've got the lower cutoff at kilohertz and the top at 12.5 kilohertz. I have the brightness and contrast. And uh, it's very difficult to get this video camera to, to actually get a good look at this flat screen monitor. But uh, Wolfgang's program is very, very elaborate and actually allows a person to do quite a bit. It's not just suited for natural radio, but for virtually any type of radio communications with its wide array of filters and other features. So I'll go ahead and pause and then we'll let it run a little while and actually do real time of it uh, catching and processing whistlers. Okay, in the left channel we have the processed audio, in the right channel we have the raw unfiltered audio. There was one of them, I heard it, I don't know if we'll see it or not. Definitely saw the second one. And uh, if you play this back a few times and listen to the audio really close, you'll find that you cannot not hear the whistler at all in the right channel. You get a lot of buzz and you hear a little bit of my crosstalk from the weather channel underneath. But without the filters, you cannot, I cannot hear the whistlers. So in wrapping this video up, I have the one thing to say. And uh, for those of you who wonder, I'm not speaking in tongues. I actually know how to speak German. So. Herr Wolfgang Bürscher, vielen Dank für Spectrum Lab Programm. Es ist klasse, ja? Vielen Dank. We ran a few seconds over 10 minutes. We can do it. It was well, it was good. System works. And I could cuss myself up and down a thousand times for forgetting to turn that, that high filter loop load uh, filter on. It made the signal noisier than it should have been. I could have done a better, better signal to noise ratio if I had just remembered to turn the, the filter on. I was sitting here on the bed listening to the output of the unit, not even expecting whistlers, and at 7.22 on the 26th of April, I heard the first one, and I hurried, scrambled, and got the equipment recording and caught the other two, the one at 7.39 and at 7.42, but I forgot to turn the filter.